for the second, or I should say the third of our four games today to finish up the battle for Atlantis with Paul Biancardi, Kevin Fitzgerald, and it is Western Kentucky with the basketball to begin. They go right to Justin Johnson. Into the corner for Darius Thompson, no. And the rebound to SMU, Paul. We saw the quick double team by SMU in the post. They are the smaller team in this game. Post defense, critical for SMU tonight. Mustangs, they were the better team on the glass yesterday against Arizona, a team with two seven-footers. This is Ben Amelagu, who had 20 yesterday. Ethan Shagwa, he was his partner in crime behind the line, and he nails it from a few feet outside. Shagwa made those threes last night, as you mentioned, against Arizona. Long distance shooter at the power forward spot. Got to get out on him. And he's just a freshman. This is Lamonte Bearded, a transfer to Western Kentucky from Buffalo. And SMU back the other way. Now Shagwa posting up. Bearden helps. It's Dwight Colby who is right in his face. Jimmy Witt shot off the mark. And Colby, he is the native of Nassau. Down with the rebound. Western Kentucky must look for 22 in the white. Colby as well as Johnson inside. That's where the advantage is for Western Kentucky. They have to utilize their size. Now you've, you've pointed out the size for both teams. And neither of these two were the tallest yesterday when they both took down top 20 teams. They could play on the perimeter. Arizona did not have answers defensively. Johnson's second look off the mark. Shagwa lost it and it flings right into Tavion Hollingsworth's hands. But he gives it away and Jimmy Witt coast to the rim. Transfer from Arkansas. Oh, here's Kobe. Kobe's bringing the energy early. Played a tremendous game last night. Got in a little bit of foul trouble against Arizona, but he was a neutralizer in the paint and at the rim. You've talked about that this week. You're sitting on the bench with foul trouble. That next game, you're ready to go. There's Thompson. 12 points yesterday. He leads Western Kentucky, scoring about 14 points a game. And when the offense bogs down for Western Kentucky, Darius Thompson's the one guy who can create his own. Graduate senior from Virginia. Bearden and Hollingsworth, they can handle the ball for Western Kentucky, but Thompson is really the steady guard. Three to shoot. Back to Shagwa. Wow, Thompson almost got a lead. What about four minutes to go in the first half, up five, and then they gave it away at that point. Beat a tremendous Purdue team, a bigger Purdue team. So they got buy-in, and their mindset is in the right direction. Yeah, that was the astonishing part. These two teams, they led for the majority of both of those games yesterday. And the thing for me, seven scholarship players for Western Kentucky. That's it. Okay, we watched the shoot-arounds. They have managers, and Rick Stansberry his son is part of the scout team. So you're looking at them wondering, how are they going to win a game? But when it's over, they come up with a big W against Purdue. That's coaching. That is really coaching. Milton blocks the shot. That was in Nashville. You saw it at the bottom of the screen. And Western Kentucky took down Vanderbilt. Now, the Utah Top 25 team in conference a couple of years ago and Old Dominion was ranked, but that was the last power conference victory. Against the team in the top 25. Shane Milton, that's his first bucket. The American Conference preseason player of the year, Shake Milton, 42% three-point shooter on his career. Colby setting the screen for Bearden. The fifth place game at the battle for Atlantis. These two teams took down AP top 20 squads yesterday. Johnson fouled on the last night. And we'll dip into this later on in the show. Just what's the benefit of a tournament like this? And to all three of those points, it's such a quick turnaround. So you have to be ready to go. Colby right there for another basket. You don't really get it. You don't practice. You just have shoot arounds and film. So there's not a lot of 
practice improvement. You get game improvement. This is Jere Foster fading away. He made a big impact in yesterday's game, even though he didn't shoot the ball very well. Defensively, four blocks. And that's against DeAndre Ayton and the Arizona Wildcats. So right back to Colby. And a clear out for him, Paul. Off the window, second opportunity. And he gets the roll. There's the fight. And he's had it. For the last two games, Dwight Colby played at Ole Miss, averaged about 15 minutes a game in two years. Then he transferred to Kansas, only averaged about five minutes. So he's an older player, but he's inexperienced, if you will, with his post moves, but not with his desire and his ability to get to the rim and hit the offensive glass. It's big hot. What Rick Stansberry said, so eager to make plays. Two seconds for Foster. Couple off balance look, and he drains this one. That's the junior from Houston. Foster, I mean, coming into this tournament, only 26% from three. Excellent rebounder. You mentioned he had four blocks last night. He brings that versatility that Tim Jankovic wants on the court. Thompson slices in to Hollingsworth. Look at this SMU team, they're 6'5 to 6'8. Nobody's smaller, nobody's bigger. Offensive foul. The hit that Foster took there, he got in there. For all we talk about SMU and their offensive versatility and their scoring, you know, Tim Jankovic's team last year, top 10 in the country, defensive field goal percentage and points allowed. It's a team that won 30 games last year. People forget that. Everett Ray is a freshman talked about enough. They're a low foul team. They don't put their opposition to the line. They don't give points away. They play defense with their hands. I'm sorry, with their feet, not their hands. And they play great positional defense. Fun to watch. So that is Western Kentucky break it. Off the drive. Yeah, with three to shoot. Put Lamonte Bearden. Rick Stansberry said, I really have not had a guard lately that could get into the paint like he does. And if you get into the paint against SMU, there's no shot blockers. They take charges. So if you can get in there, you can see the rim. Fifth place game at the Battle for Atlantis. These two teams took down top 20 teams yesterday. Elijah Landrum had a big late bucket yesterday against Purdue, and he drains the three. Against Arizona, I should say. And Landrum comes into the Atlantis tournament not shooting it very well from three, less than 20%. Important shot for his confidence. That's just his second forward. I really am, but I'll tell you what, favorites don't do well at the battle for Atlantis. <laughs> oh, Foster. Yeah, Jeray Foster would tell you that. And the rest of his teammates as well. You know, yeah, just ask. Got a recruiter one time. Yep. Tim Jankovic. That's right. Among at Texas at, Pan Am. That's right. Which is now Rio Grande. Looked like Omer snuck in there. This is Omer here. We got to play some man. We got to play some 2 3 zone. Some 1 3 1. Change the rhythm of this game because SMU is a rhythm team offensively. They are really in sync. This is from about four feet behind the line. Johnson had nine rebounds. And this guy looked like the better post player. You know, he's not very tall, but he plays big. I mean, he's 6 7. He's put together well. He led Conference USA in rebounding and double doubles. Nelson wants it back. You got to bring the defense and energy, and right now, Western Kentucky has the energy. Within three, fifth place game. Regardless of what happens today, SMU and Western Kentucky are leaving the Bahamas with a win against AP top 20 teams. Milton with plenty of room. And SMU with another offensive rebound. Right back to Milton. 
grabs one, pokes it to Omer, and that starts a run out. Yeah, this could be a foul. It's going to be short. The bodies are here, but their minds may be somewhere else. Oh, Western Kentucky won a turnover battle against Purdue. They were the more efficient team taking care of the basketball. We're, we can make the correlation here. It was both SMU and Western Kentucky that won the battle on the offensive glass. It took care of the ball. And they won the play hard battle. Yeah. They, they played with much, much more urgency than Arizona and Purdue last night. Nelson leaves it short. Colby with the offensive board. And that's where SMU must be concerned about in this game. Post defense, offensive rebounding for Western Kentucky. Here it's slicing through. Nelson, a little bit of a line drive look, but it connects. It was Jake Omer off the bench yesterday for Western. And now it looks like it's Merrick Nelson. But the response for Jeray Foster from the outside for SMU, he has seven. You know, SMU, they better defend number one in the white beard, and he can really get into the lane. Rich Stansberry said, quickest guy he's ever had. Colby, nice touch, and the cheering section erupts. He said maybe about 35, 45 family and friends in attendance. He's from Nassau. And really nice flow on that play. A couple of ball reversals into a quick random ball screen. Open side of the floor. Good offense. Jimmy Witt, that shot was affected by Hollingsworth and Colby with the rebound. Love the way he keeps it high over his head when he rebounds the ball. To Atlantis. There is a 2 and an 18 at the bottom of that board. That is wild to think that Arizona or Purdue, one of those two going to leave with three losses in this tournament. Milton from the corner, so he hits from that side of the floor. Oh, it's very unexpected. We expected those teams and Villanova, two of those three teams to be in the championship. So to be OFA here at the Battle for Atlantis is surprising. That just means each team has a lot of work to do. About near a 40-point win. And they're gonna they're an experienced team, West Virginia. And they're playing an inexperienced but talented Missouri team with John Tay Porter, who's kind of shining right now in the absence of his brother Michael. Foster. Nine quick points. Jeray Foster hit just two field goals yesterday. He's doubled that in the first half. SMU by six, less than seven to go in the first half. Ulmer thought about pulling the trigger. Now Foster has to defend Johnson in the post. 23 in the white has some girth. The former football player, <laughs> very, very briefly. That man has some thick legs. John, Justin Johnson has weighed up to about 265 pounds in the spring when he was thinking about switching to the football team. And they had a walk-on spot for him. Injured his knee and then said, I'm going to head back to the hard court. So he's trying to trim that frame. He's got Shagwa posting no. And Colby with another rebound. He already has seven today in 11 minutes. Solid defense by Western Kentucky. How about SMU? They just, they play catch cross court. They move the ball, they drive the ball, and they really spread you out, space you out. And then they take advantage. And at the two to the six point lead, Johnson, that was not in his game a couple of years ago. And he has added a three, and Western Kentucky within three. And Johnson had 17 and nine last night against Purdue. Douglas at the rim. And Johnson got a hand up. Over. Has it chipped away. It was Jimmy Witt. Jimmy Witt does a lot more than just bring the basketball up. He'll rebound Arkansas. And he can shoot it. He shoots it exceptionally well inside the arc. He's over 50% from the field. Foster. That's a high percentage. Some dream scenarios on the offensive side. SMU with five dunks. Colby wants it inside. Thought he was open. 
Well, now he's outside. Hollingsworth leaves it for him. That was Foster who slapped it down. SMU gets a lot of deflections. They have great length across the board. Another big one into the game, McCoy Agao. His first game yesterday was active after missing the first four with an illness. So he adds another long piece down low. And a wide piece. SMU needs size, and 6'8", he brings it. There he is. Yeah, he's not looking to shoot. Now he does. Maybe a double dribble, and it's just going to take a while for him. He needs game minutes to get in a rhythm, but he does bring them a physical presence and a rebounding presence inside. SMU does a really good job of fronting the post and giving that weak side help. They did it last night against Purdue. I'm sorry, Arizona. Thompson, no. Here's Jimmy Witt. He will bring in about six rebounds a game, the point guard. And this is great for Shake Milton because now he can become the two guard when Jimmy Witt has the basketball. Mustangs have doubled up the Hilltoppers in the rebound department. And Jimmy Witt points at his teammate Shake Milton, found him about 14 feet away. Well, that time SMU put a guard in the middle of the floor with Jimmy Witt. I love the way they changed their flash cuts. They put different guys in the middle. That's helped them take the largest lead tonight at seven. But after Hollingsworth, Bucket is back to five. Tavion Hollingsworth can score the basketball. 2,400 points in high school. Finished career high all-time leading scorer at Lexington High School in Kentucky. He's right in Coach Cal's backyard. Heads to Bowling Green for his collegiate career. Went from the same spot. Can't get the roll this time. And Colby with another rebound. He now has eight. Miller drops it down to Johnson. Knocked out of Johnson's hands. That was a gal. Deflected away. And there's Tyler Miller. So Western Kentucky down five. They have forced 10 SMU turnovers. And SMU is a low turnover team. As you mentioned, they only had eight last night. Rebound down to Douglas. Johnson misses. Yeah, things were flipped upside down. Yesterday, Western Kentucky with the win over number 18, Purdue, SMU, the victory over number two, Arizona. And now Thompson starts the gallop, runs right in. It's, it's really warm outside, it's cool in here. We, we've had wet spots, but we've had them wiped up really quickly. Good job by the ball boys. Jake Milton, he says, clear out with three to shoot. Landrum just barely gets it away. Kick, and they're ready to shoot it. They average ten and a half made threes per game. Omer was perfect from beyond the arc yesterday in the first half. Johnson. Blocked away, 30 seconds in the first. And SMU could essentially hold for one shot. There's maybe a half a second difference between shot game clock. Smart and good defense by SMU not to commit the foul on Johnson under the basket. He had 17 and nine rebounds yesterday against Purdue. Landrum gonna drive. No, and there's three seconds left. Johnson's going to get it at half court. That's a muscle ball. Make the extra pass, they make one more. The teams that don't, they're looking to go on their own too much. 
Backdoor cut, and Ben Abelagu has his shot altered at the rim. Colby was there, Thompson as well. And Darius, well, they all left him. Rebound down to Witt. You don't want to leave a guy who's averaging 14 and a half points per game. No. Shagwa at the rim. And Shagwa just loved the way he attacks on the offensive end. He doesn't force it. He doesn't hunt down his shot. And he puts points up on the board. Very effective, very efficient. Five in a red. Now, Ben Amelagu and Shape Milton disrupt that Johnson shot. So there is fire. He's at the top of the key. Started the second half yesterday against Arizona. Back-to-back -back triples. That was timing-wise perfect. Basket at the rim, no. And on the other side, Western Kentucky trying to cut into the seven-point deficit. Turnover, Milton. Bearded with active hands, and he regathers. Oh, picks up his second. Jankovic, the reigning American Athletic Conference Coach of the Year. Watching as his team leads by seven. Thompson scoops it in. I said it at the beginning, Darius Thompson can create his own shot. He understands how to create space for his jumper. He can blow by his defender. Good finisher, good athlete. Yeah, Rick Stansbury adds a winner. Was in the Elite Eight a couple seasons ago with Virginia. If you need a bucket one-on-one, -on -one, Darius Thompson is your guy. Ask Rick Stansbury, he'll tell you that. And right now it's Ethan Shagwa for SMU. Nine points, four of six shooting. That's the freshman from Tulsa. There's Thompson, floats it in, and counted to go the opposite way. Great read, great finish. His dad, a head coach in Tennessee of a Division II program, Cumberland. And Thompson, not just dad getting to watch son play basketball, Darius goes and watches his dad coach as often as he can. Tipped away, and Bearden flicks it right into Johnson's hand. So here is Darius Thompson. Bearden in stride, catch and shoot, rebound Milton. SMU still leads by four. There's a whistle. He's on the bench, he has not been in foul trouble this week. Was the heart and soul of this SMU team, but they certainly have a lot of pieces that can score the ball. They have four guys that usually score in double figures. Hollingsworth misfires. You know, guys that score between eight, nine, and ten points. It's a balanced attack by SMU. And Jankovic is only going to play about eight players. That's it. Should be eligible sometime in mid-December. Good pass to Foster. And he found an open lane. Don't mention that word eligibility to Rick Stansberry. That's bad blood. <laughs> Happy, strong, good hands that can score inside. And Anderson wants to watch him play at the Atlantis Resort inside the Imperial. Kentucky would have played Arizona. Then you would have had DeAndre Ayton against Dwight Colby. Two guys from Nassau. I don't think there would have been seats for any other of the fan bases. He is a hard playing dude, 22 in the white. And he's finally in a rotation. Not much playing time in Kansas. It was just so wonderful to beat a ranked team with a team limited talent wise and scholarship wise. And Melu falls on this for SMU. I mean, this team, West of Kentucky, I don't know if they're going to play well, but they surely play hard. I mean, guys on the floor, scrapping, competing. Dwight Colby, he brings the energy to his team. Well, it's nice to have an experienced coach, too, like Rick Stansberry, to help piece this thing together and move along a young team and a small roster. Landrum has to go with one second. Johnson pounces on the rebound. But he walked right into a double team, and Foster has a lane. Inside, follow for Shagwa. 
And you talk about experience with Rick Stansberry and successful. Did a tremendous job at Mississippi State. Six NCAA appearances, five NIT appearances. Count them. It's very good yesterday. Johnson had to go to Coach Stansberry back in April and say, hey, I'd like to play football. What do you think? Stansbury, he said, hey, look, if you want to do it, go ahead. And eventually Johnson comes back to the basketball roster. And that is a huge forward to have down low. I think it's made him better on the court. Yeah. He takes contact very well. And Melikul, and that counts. But the shot fake and the drive, strong body, once he gets into the lane, Defenders are bouncing off of him. He is 6'5 and 215 pounds. Bearded the spin, sidestepping past everyone. Now that was a move to the rim in a blink of an eye. He's scoring 11 points per game. He's taking a lot of shots. And when Rick Stansberry says it's the quickest guy I've ever coached, he was in the SC Starkville for eight prior years as an assistant. That was a backyard move there from Amelagu. Bounce it off of the back of a Western Kentucky player. Witt pulls up late in the shot clock. And it's Nelson with the rebound. Merrick Nelson, one of the pair of the, uh, two of those freshmen, he and Omer, with significant minutes off the bench. Perhaps not expected to have quite as large a role as they are playing he has. And you can't put the guys in the red shirts in the game. Western Kentucky managers were going over the scout earlier today. They have gotten more minutes than they expected. The managers in practice. Let me coach Stansberry's sons. All right, there. Shaq. Oh, wait. I'll tell you what. They have to be careful when they celebrate. Because you know, and also Stansberry's kids. You see them there. Isaac and Noah. Walk through the ballroom today. The managers and Coach Stansberry's sons were walking through the offense of SMU. Take floor down. It was classic. That's a big screen by Colby. He's a wide boy. Thompson floats it down. Thompson does it from three levels. The deep ball, the middle game. We just saw the pull up, the body control. He's very clever and quick getting to the rim. That's why he's hard to guard. Oh, Shagwa almost missed that basketball and wit was in the right spot. And Shagwa drains the three. A game high 16 for the freshman. Shagwa is going to be a problem in the American Conference. Inside out ability. Yeah, he defends the post. He can score in the post. And he's comfortable and confident behind the line. And even Paul Biancardi tweets about you. That's when you're good. <laughs> Are you sending a tweet out about Marvin Bagley right now? How about Bagley? 34 and 15. Nation's number one player out of high school. Thompson with the follow. -up. And Duke wins in overtime over Texas. Bagley can impact the game on both ends of the floor. Puts up big numbers, but he blocks shots and he rebounds at 6'11". And he's got great skill. He was your number one recruit in the class of 2017. And we will see number three, DeAndre Ayton in Arizona at about 9.30 Eastern tonight. They play pretty with the seventh place game. We got four seven footers in that game. Arizona, two, with Ristich and Ayton. Shake Milton with a three. And for Purdue, Isaac Haas. The big fella, Harms, 7-2. Great size in tonight's game. There's eight teams in the country with a pair of seven-footers. We got a quarter of them tonight. And how about this one? Purdue, Arizona, 12 ESPN, former top 100 players. A lot of talent in this game. Stick around. Uh, and mainly because, hey, 
We got a close one here in the fifth place game. SMU led by five at the break, has now extended it to a seven point advantage. And one of these two teams are going to leave the Bahamas with a pair of wins. Shagwa. He rolls off the pick and scores again from outside. Well, Tim Jankovic, we know he's a tremendous coach. He's coached with and for some outstanding coaches. But he has been running that simple fake ball screen, quick slip, finding the mismatch, and popping Shagwa deep behind the line. Largest lead of the night, a triple team, Johnson. Over for three, knocks it down. His first basket tonight. Yep, yesterday had 15 against Purdue. So now Shagwa starts the roll. In this case, Justin Johnson just can't get there, get out quick enough. They ran it against DeAndre Ayton last night and Ristich. So eight threes for SMU. Last season, they were fifth in the country in three-point shooting. Milton takes it himself and slips it in. And the difference in that play, that time he held his screen, he allowed Shake Milton to come off. So sometimes they quick release, and sometimes they use the screen. They look for the mismatch. Shake Milton has been good for three nights. Today might be his best performance. Well, Shake can give you a lot of things beside points, but his best attribute is his three-point shot. Just like that young man, Jake Ulmer. My goodness, quick release. Love his confidence. Soon as he's open, he knows it. Rises up. Jake Ulmer was headed to an NAIA school. Rick Stansberry was Wallace. Had 106 points in three games in the state tournament. That's what did it. That's what did it for Rick Stansberry. Unfortunate for the University of the Cumberlands. Homer is now playing Division I basketball. Collingsworth and Witt the rebound. Another long rebound for Jimmy Witt. If there's one skill players should develop, it's shooting. Shagwa inside, running the floor well. He has 21 tonight. Try to follow Shagwa. It's like a map. Tim Jankovic's team, they were out of rhythm a couple nights ago against Northern Iowa. That's just a testament to the Panthers defensively, but then the bounce back win against Arizona, and they have dictated the pace today. Colby, though, muscles in wide frame. And Rick Stansberry, give him the assist on that one. Decided to feed his big fella on the timeout. Great execution by the Hilltoppers. So a double-double for Colby, 12 points and 11 rebounds. And, and that's where they have the advantage when the game slows down is inside in the low post offense. Bearden dares Douglas to shoot and he misfires. Hollingsworth has a couple free it's Lansing, I doubt it. But you look at the Michigan State team, they really defend. I think they have all the pieces. Cassius Winston as a point guard, they have Tum Tum, they have a two-headed point guard. And I think that's so important when it comes to championship play. It's one thing to wear the t-shirt. It's another thing to wear the t-shirt and then win the Maui Invitational. You have the validation behind it, too. You know, he'll go back to the mock turtleneck one season, <laughs> once he gets back uh, in the States. Took down Wichita State on Wednesday night. And won the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational. Earlier today, Villanova wins the battle for Atlantis with two to shoot. Shake Milton misfires. And Omer pushing Thompson. They went the reverse. He goes up with the right hand. Thompson in double figures with 13. Thompson has a great burst of speed. In the open floor and with the ball in his hands with the blow by dribble. I've been impressed. Bearding got around that screen. And Melligan, he picked his pocket. Here's Thompson again, up to Omer. Swatted away. Milton keeps it alive. What a block on this end of the floor. We've touched on him all night. Jimmy Witt busts up a three on one. Three point lead for the Mustangs, less than six to go. A 
Gal, just his second game. Out to the three-point strike. And Melagu know, and they totally forgot about Foster. Makes him pay with the follow. SMU had 20 offensive rebounds last night against Arizona. They find their way to the glass. They'll send two and three guys and have great size. Not real tall, not real big, but good athletes. Ulmer. SMU with the ball ahead by five. But just going back to Thompson, many players would have taken that three. He drove and then found his teammate. He's so efficient, Thompson. You look at his numbers tonight, he's six of 11 from the field. He doesn't take a lot of bad shots. Well, he's on the floor almost the entirety of the game. He's playing about 36 minutes a night. Milton steps around Colby to a gal. Who brings the defense? Who brings the energy and the competitiveness, the fight? It's what happens on the third game in three nights. Control is your defense more than your offense. SMU ball nine compared to just four for Western Kentucky. Bearded inside. Who has answered at a five point lead at the break? They brought the competitiveness, but their defense is just not there tonight. SMU 48% from the field, and SMU 47% from three. This team. Rick Stansberry has them giving their all. They're just so limited with roster. Turnover. Hollingsworth finishes it. From the battle for Atlantis with two wins. And a top 25 victory yesterday against number 18, Purdue. Witt, and he cocks the arms way back and still hits it from the free throw line. Now Hollingsworth is just dancing down the lane. Colby over Foster, but it ricochets into a Melagoose hands. Watch SMU on offense. They cut right by each other. They're little brush screens, rub screens. They're not full screens. And defensively, if you don't communicate, you get lost and you get beat off the drive. Ben Jacobson said it best. When they come together, you have to stay with your man or you have to switch. That's more than I was head coach. Yes, you have to do one of the two. Thought everybody knew that. <laughs> Multiple bids in the NCAA tournament. Wichita State makes this conference bona fide. We like to use that word resume. We're always talking about resumes in March. You just added Wichita State to the conference. Everybody gets to play a ranked team, another one, twice. And you added a team in Wichita State that, in my mind, can get to the Final Four. Dwight Colby playing in his hometown of Nassau. Kicks it out to Bearden, and Omer left all alone. There's SMU and Amelagu and Omer may have commits and unwind. We talk about so many of the benefits of playing in a holiday tournament. How about the opportunity that SMU and Eastern, uh, Western Kentucky got, excuse me, playing Purdue and Arizona? That's not going to happen in scheduling. You're not going to get them to come to your place. Shagwa blocked by Colby. Wynn has it swiped away. It was Thompson. And then Colby with a double double. Whistle. It's a good leader by example. How about these games this week, partner? We've got another one coming down in the last couple minutes. Four-point lead for SMU. SMU played the three-point game on Monday, defeated Arizona in a six. Going into the battle for Atlantis, though, SMU not a great free-throw shooting team. Two games coming in, 56% from the free-throw line. That could be a concern if they have to shoot them to win it. Bearden fights for that rebound. He ran it down, wanted it, and a new 30-second shot clock. Had nice touch. Since should not be a factor. The energy's been good. Let's see if they can defend. Defense, 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 
This is a Melibu. Finds the freshman. Shagwa driving. Rolls up. Tipped in by Foster. Four point lead with 117 to go. And Ten second chance points for SNU in this game. It's hard to keep track of these guys. Similar size. They all hit the glass. Bearded. Four three. One point game. Less than a minute to go. 12 in the second half for the Red Shirt Junior. And he came to the battle for Atlantis. Three for six from distance. So you know he can make it. He has the last six for Western Kentucky. Milton off balance. What a rebound for Amelikou. That's a big offensive board because there's only 29 seconds left. 23 on the shot clock. You may want to think about trapping right now if you're Western Kentucky. Get the ball out of his hands. And if you go. First free throws for Shake Milton. That is a 92% free throw shooter who misfires. So you've got a timeout for Western Kentucky. The foul, it's a one and one, not two free throws yet. No timeouts for Western Kentucky. Eight seconds, Johnson feeds it to Omer, lets it fly, and it's a... 14 seconds to take a lead. One last chance for the Mustangs. Witt calls the... Shake Milton, I believe. They're stacked up, 4.5 left, no timeouts left. This is Amelagoo, two to shoot, sets his feet for the win. Western 